most famous makers of monster movies, Hammer Films, are celebrating their 80th anniversary. And what better place to have that birthday party than at the London Film Memorabilia Convention with a host of Hammer Film stars. I've been talking to Edward D'Souza from Phantom of the Opera, Melvin Hayes from Curse of Frankenstein, and one or two others which I think you'll remember. I, I'm, I'm a very bad speller. But I, but I, so I love practicing signing my name, and I love meeting all the people, and I'm astonished that they all remember who I am. Uh, we all love your movies. Tell me your favourite Hammer movie. My favourite, oh, Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, mine too. Oh, good. Yeah. What was it like working with Herbert Long? Oh, he was a wonderful gentleman. Yeah. A very, very nice man. When I virtually never saw his face because he was always in a mask. <laughs> One of the problems of being the Phantom, I guess. Yeah. And Heather Sears was lovely. Yeah. They were, they were all very nice people indeed. Did you feel you were doing something quite special then? Uh, I felt very special. You always do at Bray. Uh, because the only film that's being made when you're there is the one that you're in. So it's the only game in town and so you feel very special. Did it feel like a repertory company? Yes, I, d I think it did, but it was, it, was, <coughs> it, was, it was not a repertory company that you knew all the other members of, unless you were in many of the films, and I was only in two. Tell me about your memories of working on Curse of Frankenstein. Well, it was amazing because I was thrilled to bits to meet a man called Mr. Peter Cushing. One of my favourites. Uh, wow, well, oh, unbelievable. One of the nicest men you could ever wish to meet. Um, I mean, the thing was, I was only on the screen, I would say, for about three and a half minutes, but it was one of the most successful pictures of the year. I then went on to do Violent Playground with him, The Flesh and the Fiends, uh, and a couple of others which I don't even wish to talk about. One was called A Touch of the Sun, I think, um, but he was lovely, and they were happy days. Of course, you played a young Frankenstein. We I repeat together on screen. Yeah, well, no, we, we were never together on screen. That's why this picture here, which I will hold up and show you, Peter said to me, that's what I say to my mum. He said, um, we must have a picture taken together because as you play me on the film, sure. you'll never work, we never yeah. have a picture together because we don't appear together. So that was a ma magic moment. My memories of it ain't half hot mum is such a shame that one of Britain's greatest comedies is not being repeated today. Well, I've got the DVD set. Oh, that's all. Well, there we are then. Yeah. No, it was great fun. Great fun to do. And... Um, it was the weirdest part I could possibly play. I think he was a bit effeminate, actually, between you and me. Not, sure? not me, of course, naturally, <laughs> being a very, very butch actor. <laughs> it went on for, what, eight seasons, nine seasons? Eight or nine, yeah, yeah. and sold all over the world. And it's just been shown at a moment in New Zealand, Australia, Dubai, Germany, Holland, everywhere except Great Britain. And of course it's never ever going to age that show, is it? No. Well that was the cleverest thing about David and Jimmy, the writers. Everything they wrote, it was already period. Dad's Army, Hello Hello, Heidi High, they were all period, so they were already aged. Shane, tell me about your memories of working on Hammer movies. Well, Hammer movies, they were the best films I ever did. Um, and uh, in those days, uh, it was a kind of, not everyone wanted to do Hammer movies because some people thought they were too good to do Hammer horror movies. But I thought it was the most wonderful opportunity to work with seasoned actors, to learn from them, to get the friendship, and uh, to, to find out what it's like to work in a movie. Uh, and I thought they were wonderful movies. Uh, and indeed, now if you look around and see hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of people who adored Hammer horror movies. And they come back again and again and again, and they remember your movies, and, uh, and they enjoyed them. And I just worked with so many people, and, um, not just the, the stars like Peter and Peter Fisher and Maddie Smith, but Bernard Lee, uh, Patrick Todd, and all kinds of people. And, and I found them totally charming, and was, to work with, Freddy, uh, with Terry Fisher was, uh, was wonderful, because it was the last film, the last track of that movie that he ever did. And uh, he was a, a dear sweet man and very talented. 
um, I just I loved them, especially and working with Peter Collins on Straight Into the Morning, uh, which probably is the best film that I did for Hammer. I can see by the T-shirt, <laughs> the man who runs Hammer Lovers. What do you think of the event today? Well, it's an amazing turnout, and I think that's due to Thomas Boynton, who's the organiser. Um, you're seeing guests here, Hammer guests, that you've never seen before at an event and probably will never see again. Uh, and it's a testament to the guests and the amount of fans that have turned out. So who's your favourite here? Oh, oh that a, a no, that's, difficult a, question that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's a loaded question. There's many favourites. Veronica, Caroline, too many to mention. Yeah. I couldn't single anyone out, although I just did. <laughs> Have you had a chance to meet so many people actually in person today, as opposed to online? Yeah, that's been another thing that's been really surprising. I mean, people that have came up recognise me, obviously, from the Hammer Lovers, and the T-shirt's a bit of a giveaway. But it's nice to put faces to the, the names. The amount of people that have come up and said, oh, Matt, we're on the site, we use the site regularly. And it makes it worthwhile. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Wayne, tell me about your latest book. It's called Hammer's Film Legacy. It covers all Hammer's films between Quatermass Experiment and The Devil a Daughter. Um, it's 408 pages, hardback, but we're limited to just 500 copies of it. And what do you think special about it? It's basically where I started out. I've done quite a few Hammer books now. Um, I've always wanted to do a big, glossy, hardback book with lots of colour in it, so this has given me the opportunity. When I kicked off years ago, I had the idea of doing the book in this format, but couldn't get a publisher, so I broke it down into the magazine, The House That Hammer Built. And then over subsequent years, I've done a few more books. So I finally decided for Hammer's 80th anniversary to bring back the idea that I originally started with and to do this book. Thank you. 